assalamu alaikum welcome in today's lesson <coughs> today's lesson is population studies and this is your textbook unit 4 lesson number 2 and this is the second portion of the lesson we have already been discussing the first part in the last week uh, for today's lesson you can reach to page number 158 and the lesson runs until page number 162 objective of the lessons um, you already know that you must be able to know about the different types of migration we have already discussed this discussed in the last week lesson uh, the reasons why people migrate we are already discussed then you must be able to use the maps and case studies to learn about the patterns of international migration you must be able to learn about uh, urbanization and the growth of cities around the world So this is the lesson uh, that starts with the first slide on page number 158 actually. It tells you about the pattern of international migration during the last century. You can see that different uh, countries they have uh, experienced the migration, uh, people leaving from those areas and some countries uh, they have witnessed the people entering in those areas. For example, America is a country here in the west part of the world. America is a country that has received a huge number of people as migrants, whether they were temporary, whether they were permanent migrants. The majority of the migrants that entered in America were from Mexico, from the South America, from the Europe, and even from some other parts of the world. For example, Indonesia, you can see that here, this area contributed a huge number of population, people migrating to uh, America. So uh, other than this, uh, Middle East, for example, our focus of attention is Middle East. This part of the world actually because of the discovery of oil there were the creation of jobs more opportunities to work so people particularly from subcontinent of India and Pakistan and Bangladesh the people from those areas migrated to Middle East particularly you can see Saudi Arabia uh, Kuwait Qatar Bahrain UAE uh, Oman these are the countries that received a huge number of migrants from uh, subcontinent of uh, India and Pakistan and Bangladesh uh, other than these you can see Europe people migrated from place to place <clears throat> some part of the Middle East they they, uh, they experienced that people leaving particularly due to uh, job creation in Europe better opportunities life conditions in Europe Europe received a huge number of migrants from Asia from Africa from South America so uh, this actually uh, slide actually tells us how the people migrated to which areas which were which areas were the major focus of uh, migration going into that area for example america was the focus of people to to reach that place middle east was the focus of the people to reach that place for the work opportunities europe was the focus for better life opportunities so different people from and different other parts of the world migrated you can see here this key tells us this the the down key here in the middle it shares the share shows that what are the shares of migrant uh, in the national population of these different countries for example you can see the brown color here it says more than 45 percent of people living in this country are migrants so here you can see saudi arabia uh, oman uh, these this this kind of this country actually tells you that uh, in Saudi population more than 45 percent of the people are <coughs> outside workers those who have migrated into that country now here the next key actually tells you that 55 to 78 percent of the people in this uh, population of this country are outside workers those who have migrated into the country so examples of these countries are uh, Kuwait Qatar Bahrain this this Middle East country they are here in the middle so Kuwait, Qatar, Bahrain, uh, UAE and then this Hong Kong basically uh, these are the areas where the migrants outnumber the local population <clears throat> yani migrants are more than the people those who are already belonging to that area why because of the work opportunities so many people uh, migrated to those areas and they outnumber the local people <clears throat> Moving on to this slide, it tells us about effects of migration. You, you must know that effects of migration are both positive as well as negative. The country that receives the people from other countries, they also have positive and negative impact. For example, positive impact means that so many young people, they migrate to that area. 
due to work opportunities due to better life conditions so young people usually migrate when young people usually migrate they are young they are capable to work so they contribute in, in the growth of the national economy of a country where they are migrating to and uh, the negative impact is that the local people in that area they are sometimes they are not un, uh, they are not welcoming they don't like the migrants to to enter into their country because they feel that the migrants will take over the jobs they have they will have uh, more success they will be rivals they will be competitors in the businesses so they they feel threatened about their own prosperity so in some countries their local population they don't welcome the migrants the best example is japan right the, you can see that in canada in europe in america people they easily migrate and they are welcomed but in japan the people are uh, the migrants they don't find good opportunities because the policies of the, the Ch japanese government is not supportive to migration they believe that migrants will alter the local uh, trade local businesses local uh, em employment levels so they don't welcome <clears throat> at the same time the people uh, those who migrate from their countries back in their own countries there is a huge impact economical because they are no more in their countries so they don't contribute in the economic prosperity of their of their nation of their country at the same time there are few people to work uh, although it reduces the economic burden for, for, for a certain time on that country but overall in the long term the country is actually losing a huge human capital humans are actually one of the world's best capital best resource because all the machines they are operated by humans all the big businesses they are run by the humans so uh, the the value of human is not less than any other uh, important machine they are one of the world's best resource so those countries where the people are leaving they also have negative impact so this is actually this slide is all about how the migration actually affects people who leave the the country and people who join into an uh, uh, to reach into another country they both bring positive and negative impacts then this slide is actually about some people they, they migrate not because of their own choices not for the sake of economic prosperity but because of some uh, some uh, factors that are beyond their control uh, one of the, uh, the this kind of factors are uh, for example civil wars natural disasters the, those people who move from their areas into another area due to these reasons they are called refugees so uh, refugee is a kind of migration which is a little bit different than the normal migration normal migration people migrate for the sake of better life for the sake of economic prosperity for job for work for education for health purposes but uh, in this case when the people they move from their areas due to the factors that force them that are not within their control then these people when they reach in another place there they are called mig migrants but uh, refugees with a refugee status so uh, you can see from this picture uh, the map clearly tells you that during the last century uh, so many people migrated due to conflicts wars natural disasters from around the world you can see middle east has so many conflicts iran syria iraq uh, palestine lebanon they, they had plenty of conflicts so people migrated to other parts of the world similarly in north africa you can see there were conflicts uh, in Sudan there was conflict, in uh, Mali and Chad, in uh, Congo, in uh, Tanzania, Uganda, you can see these areas, uh, they had conflict, so people migrated from these areas into safer places. Same is the case here, uh, you can see Afghanistan, they had conflict, they had war with the with Soviet Union, so people migrated, then there was a war with America, so people migrated into Pakistan and Iran. Uh, so the, this uh, ma map actually tells you about how the people uh, migrated from one place to another place on a large scale due to civil wars and uh, natural disasters or you can say persecution. Uh, persecution factor is also one of the factors where large people, well, large groups of people, they migrate for the sake of, for the sake of uh, getting security into another place. What is persecution? Per persecution is a, a kind of... Uh, killing or torture by a dominant group just for the sake of you can say being different in in case of religion in case of ethnicity so they persecute the uh, smaller groups within their uh, 
society. So this slide actually tells you the figures, how you can see here successful refugee claims. This, the, 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 the circles actually tells you the numbers, how much people they migrated into those areas. You can see that America, they, they received the people, Europe received the people from different regions, right? From Africa, the people migrated from one area to another area within the African continent. So this is how people migrated from one place to another place under the circumstances of uh, civil wars or conflicts or natural disasters. They are called refugees. This slide is actually about, about a case study of Lebanon. Uh, Lebanon is a country which is known for uh, its population spread all over the world. The word diaspora is used on your page number 160. Diaspora means spread. Now, this picture clearly tells you that how many Lebanese people they are uh, spread all over the world in different parts of the world. For example, America, North America, around 2.5 million of the Lebanese people uh, they are settled there, they migrated due to wars, their, their uh, internal conflicts, or you can say natural disasters, whatever, or even uh, for the sake of better life, they migrated to North America, South America, particularly Brazil, uh, around 7 million people or 8 million people are uh, in uh, uh, Brazil alone. So this is uh, the two major points where the Lebanese people migrated, then there are other parts of the world also. Uh, Africa, Australia, Asia, Europe, uh, you can see that Lebanese people, majority of the Lebanese people, they live outside of their country, so they are called diaspora. Diaspora means separate. Mm, you can say that almost uh, all parts of the world, they are scattered and Lebanese are known as a country with a highest portion of uh, its population living as diaspora and as compared to its total population a huge number of population is living outside of the country's territorial boundaries this slide is about the urbanization uh, or you can say the growth of cities are the people migrating from rural areas into cities so um, basically the story behind this slide is that uh, once the industrialization took place in the early 1800s, you can see here just in the start, it says in the early 1800s, around 3% of the population, they lived in the cities. Very few people. But once the industrialization took place, there were more jobs in the cities, there were uh, work opportunities, there were prosperity, there were more facilities, social services were on a better level in the, in the cities. So people started to migrate from rural areas into the cities. By 1950, 28% of the people, uh, they were living in the cities as compared to 3% of early 1800s. And today, from 28%, the, the number has further increased to 50% of the population lives in the city. Uh, it is expected that 70% of the people will be living in the city within uh, 30 years from now. The reason behind this is that cities are uh, a places where better uh, social conditions prevail. Uh, people have better education, health, facilities, people are safe and secure, uh, people have better economic or earning opportunities. So here you can see that urbanization actually, uh, the, it says that urbanization uh, led to the massive growth in cities. Here, uh, the bar graph tells you that uh, this, the, the, lean, the horizontal lines tell you the percentage of the people living in the cities and this um, vertical lines is actually about different uh, regions of the world. Now you can see North America and South America in these two regions around 80% of the people they live in the cities and here uh, Europe and Oceania group around 70% uh, people they live in the cities whereas both Asia and Africa there are 40% of the people living in the cities. Why these two continents have low pop proportion of the population living in the cities is that basically these two continents, the countries in these regions are poor. They are not industrialized countries. They're, they are basically, our majority of them are agricultural countries. Their economy is based on agricultural product and agriculture is not in the cities. Basically, this, this is in the uh, rural areas or villages. So they are the majority of the people are employed in basic industries or you can say uh, basic uh, basic services for example production of the food so they are uh, living in the rural areas 
that's why the majority of the population in these two continents are not living in the cities as compared to america which is uh, america both north and south which is around uh, 80% europe and oceania group which is around 70% so this shows that how people have migrated to cities particularly in in europe and america because these two regions are highly industrialized so people live in cities next slide is going to be uh, about different cities that are growing with the passage of time uh, three different years are mentioned here 1975 2000 and 2012 you will see that how cities have changed their positions uh, in the past one city was big then it was taken over by another city the reason is that some cities offered better work opportunities so the focus of the people was to migrate to that area so let's move on to the next slide you will see how cities emerged uh, bigger and bigger with the passage of time during these three three mentioned years You can see that Tokyo was number one, world's biggest city in terms of number of people living in 1975, in 2000, and in 2012. The three different years that are calculated are that are measured in terms of population living in these cities. So Tokyo had around 26 million people uh, in 1975, and it is still world's largest city in terms of population. The other cities they have fluctuated from their numbers. For example, in 1975. Uh, New York was second biggest city, but now uh, New York uh, is no more in the list of top five uh, in 2012 because some other cities have taken over. You can see that in 1975, Delhi was nowhere in the list, but now Delhi in 2012 has become the world's second biggest city with 22 million of the people living in the uh, city of India, which is the capital of the country as well. Similarly, now look here. Uh, it says that Mexico was the third largest city in 1975. In 2000, it became the second largest city, but in 2012, it became the fifth largest city, whereas Sao Paulo from Brazil and Mumbai from India, they took over. They were nowhere in, uh, in the list in, uh, in 1975, so they came from behind. In 2000, in year 2000, in, uh, in year 2000, they were in uh, four and fifth, but now they have increased their proportion from uh, from fourth and fifth to third and fourth. Moving on to the next slide, you will see some other cities that were nowhere in the list in uh, in 1975 and 2000 and 2012, and they are added in in the next uh, next five countries. <coughs> Countries on number six, seven, eight, nine, and ten in the in the top ten countries of the world in terms of population. You can see Los Angeles in America was in 1975. It was sixth largest city. Now it is no more in uh, 2012. It is no more in the list because, for example, Karachi and Dhaka they were uh, nowhere in the previous list, but they have taken over. They have increased because of the population migrating to these cities from other rural areas within the countries. So Los Angeles has been kicked out. You can see that other areas also have been kicked out. Some some cities, Moscow was the 10th largest city. It is nowhere in the list. Uh, same, same is the case. Delhi was the eighth largest city in 2000, but it has uh, reached to number, one, number two uh, in 2012. This actually shows that how cities have grown over the period of time during these three mentioned years uh, or you can say a, a period of around uh, 30 or you can say 35 years or so what it shows that the creation of jobs in the cities have led to the people migrating to these areas uh, for the sake of economic prosperity and battle services so this way uh, people have migrated from time to time uh, these are different patterns of migration uh, i hope you will understand the lesson it is easy to understand so you must be able to memorize what are one of the some of the big cities around the world that are big population centers in terms of numbers and still if you are unable to understand or comprehend anything you can still come back with your questions in schoology until then uh, see you for next week's class thank you very much